So I got off work maybe about 30 seconds ago, if that. I worked remote today, and Dan and I are working on packing up the car right now, and we're gonna head up to camp for a long weekend to some fly fishing. So stick around, it's gonna be an awesome weekend. So we are on the road now, driving on I-99, headed towards State College. We're headed up to camp for a couple of days. Doug took off a couple of days of work, but we're gonna make a little bit of a detour before we get up to Kettle Creek. And uh, we're gonna fish a stream that I frequent pretty often during the school year. It's known to hold some big fish, so we're gonna throw some big nymphs, see if we can uh, maybe pick up a nice fish. Overcast skies right now should be a really good evening on the water. I'm gonna catch a fish out of it, but sometimes you just don't. Like I, I don't know. This is it's a it's a weird stream, but there are just there's some really quality fish in here. So it's like so Dan and I just got here and we're we're just we we just parked and right now we're just kind of walking the we're just looking the water a little over and uh, kind of seeing what we got to start with and it looks fantastic. It's a little off color and it's overcast. As you can see here, and just perfect conditions for catching some big fish. Well, looks like that one just got off. Waiting staff got in the way, unfortunately. Dang. What a shame. That's the thing too, it's a, it's a tough stream to wade, so... The waiting staff is definitely a plus, but I guess that's a situation where it can be a hindrance. Just lost a really nice fish, probably about a 16 inch fish, in this run that we were just fishing that... Pretty much what happened is I kind of learned a lesson here. Uh, I had my Orvis waiting staff, you know, deployed hanging below me because I needed to wait out into the current a little bit to reach the opposite side, to reach that eddy. So I had this out and I'm throwing over right across that current. I get into the eddy, perfect, perfect drift, set the hook on a fish. It's a big fish. I'm playing it through the current, finally get it over onto the right side, I'm below it, and then uh, reach for it with the net. What happened? Reached my net, fish, where my rod is, pull, bumped it right, knocked the, uh, the fly right out of its mouth. So, sucks, but you gotta learn sometime. Better this 16 inch fish than a 22 inch fish, you know? So, let's keep fishing.
I got the monkey off our back. We were getting a, we, we really wanted to get a video in because this is just such a beautiful place. And uh, we are starting to feel the pressure because Dan had lost two decent ones and uh, it's just been slow. I just hooked into, Dan and I were just walking up the bank here and we were like, okay, oh, that looks like a good spot. And Dan said, well, hey, why don't you go fish that? And here he is. A really pretty fish. Took the stone fly. And uh, this water is just, you look at it and you're like, this is stone fly written all over it. Just highly oxygenated, great ripples, awesome pocket water. Just such a fun place to nymph. We'll get a picture of this guy and then we'll get a release. All right, and there he is. We're gonna let him back in. Really pretty fish, he's so brown. There he goes. Man, all right, so now we can relax a little bit and have some fun. All right, so I am on the board now behind Doug with a uh, nice little fish. He came on a hare's ear, a dark olive hare's ear with a red bead, a little good hot spot. Let's get him. All right, let's get this guy, uh, get him back in the water. There he goes. All right, so I'm on the board now. We're working a nice stretch of pocket water here, and there, there's a lot of bugs coming off, but we're not really seeing anything on the surface. But uh, maybe close to dark, we'll see something drop and uh, be able to fish your eyes for a little bit before we get up the Kettle Creek. Nice fat fish. <laughs> That's a nice healthy fish. He came on the stone fly. That's a good fish. Man, that was awesome. That was a good fish. He kind of surprised me and when I hooked him, he jumped. Like, you should have seen this fish jump. Uh, but just working the pocket water again. That one, like I said, that one came on a stone fly on a Pat's rubber legs. Can't beat the Pat's rubber legs. Spinner's coming down. So we pulled up to this little, uh, little tree in the water. I said to Doug, I was like, should we bother? And he was like, yeah, you know what? So I, we bothered and caught a big one. It's a good one. PA brown trout. We like them big. There he goes. Yep. Caddis casings. Big old mayfly. There are bugs all through this, this river. And it is quite the place. This is absolutely beautiful. Bugs flying everywhere. It is definitely spring. 
best time of the year to be on the water. So we're about running out of filming light here, but we're gonna, all these bugs starting to fall, we're gonna see if we can find a spot, some still water, maybe get a little dry fly action. But we will see you guys up at camp. Try and sit on the edge of this log right here and fish that up in there. And we are fishing in just a beautiful location here. It's kind of like a meadow all around. <laughs> yes. 